Hello and welcome to another edition of Kemel Toaster Video Magazine. I'm your host, Jake Vickers. In this edition, uh, we're going to cover how to tune Spam Assassin just a little bit to increase the throughput of your mail server. Now, as you may or may not be aware, uh, the bulk of your mail server load is going to be on incoming mail. Your system actually doesn't really uh, use any resources when it sends email out or when it actually moves email into your folder or for local deliveries or anything like that. The bulk of the load on your email server is going to come from when a message comes in having to scan it for spam and viruses and things of that nature. Uh, those are the ones that are real CPU and re uh, resource intensive on your server and will take a little bit. Um, so we're going to in this episode cover how to compile our spam assassin rules. Now the CentOS 5 server we're using in this example um, is the same server that we've been setting up in the last couple of videos so you can pretty much follow right along with us if you have been watching the previous videos and uh, be exactly where we're at now uh, most of the stuff we're going to do uh, will also apply over to the other distros uh, some of the package names may be different and they may you may not have to use a third-party repository to obtain them now a note on third-party repositories. Uh, one of the dependencies we need to fill to compile our rules is not in the CentOS 5 repository. You're more than welcome to use a third-party repository to obtain this package. I personally do not on my production servers. On my development and personal servers I do. Uh, back in the way back past when I first got involved into Qmail uh, and to Red Hat and Linux in general uh, I did use some third-party repositories and unfortunately they got my butt chewed by my boss a few times when I was working for that company um, the packages that come from CentOS come from Red Hat Enterprise uh, Linux which is uh, engineered and while you notice that it may not use the most up-to-date version of packages there actually is a reason for that uh, some of your other projects like Fedora uh, they do run bleeding edge um, which means the package just came out real recently and it hasn't been thoroughly tested and there may be bugs that pop up and rear their ugly little heads and get you in trouble and the Red Hat group what they do on their enterprise Linux package is they use an older version that while may not be the most advanced or feature rich uh, is probably the most stable you're gonna find um, that is also the newest one of the pro well actually we're gonna download our dependency from the Fedora project. Um, Fedora was started by Red Hat and was run by Red Hat for quite a long time before they forked off onto their own. Uh, and s because of that, the packages produced by the Flo uh, Fedora Extra Packages group um, are have a real high uh, reputation rate as far as uh, Enterprise Linux goes. Um, in the show notes, I will show you uh, for subscribers how to install the uh, Fedora Extra repository if you wish to do so. I will not in this video. We're just going to install the one file we need to get from them. That being said, let's go ahead and get logged into our machine. And as you may have noticed in the previous videos, when I, whenever I log into a machine, I like to always go ahead and check out and just make sure everything's up and running. Here we can see that all of our daemons are up and running. I also like to type in W or WHO will also give you the similar results just to see who else may be logged into the system uh, at the same time you are. Uh, it's a good thing to know. And then another thing I also like to do is I really like to run last. Uh, and that just tells you the last few people that have logged in and logged out of the machine. especially on public facing servers I like to check that out just to see um, make sure nobody else is logging in with a compromised uh, password account or anything like that uh, obviously this machine is VMware on a private network so there's probably not too much risk of somebody else logging in okay <clears throat> now to uh, cover what we're going to do here is we're going to compile our spam assassin rules and spam assassin as you may recall from the previous videos uh, you send a message into spam assassin spam assassin looks at it and assigns it a score whether it's positive or negative and once it's done looking at the entire message gives it a final score uh, depending on what rules it may have hit whether that be plus or minus um, and that will determine whether the message gets marked as spam or not now 
that can be a rather lengthy process. If you're running just the base spam assassin, um, you're looking at a you know te uh, probably ten twenty thousand rules. If you're running some of the extra uh, packages uh, that are provided by the Cumul Toaster Plus uh, package. Uh, to get additional spam assassin rules, uh, you start looking at upwards of 30, 40, 50, even 60,000 rules that spam assassin has to look at and process the message through. And the rules are in plain text and they're using Perl regular expressions. So when a message gets run through, spam assassin looks at a rule, parses it, then runs the message to against the rule to see if it matches anything. If it does, it assigns it a score. If it doesn't, it just ignores it and moves on to the next rule and repeats the process. Obviously, doing this for uh, 30, 40, 50,000 rules is rather time consuming. So what we're going to do is we're going to compile those rules into native code. So instead of having to actually look at the rules and parse them and process them as regular text, they're compiled code, which will make them run a lot faster. Uh, your results uh, will depend on upon your uh, mail server and its load. I notice on some of my bigger machines that I start noticing uh, 10 to almost 25 percent speed increases as far as incoming email goes. In some of the future videos uh, we're going to show you how to really boost up some of your uh, incoming mail speeds since that is the bulk of what your server uh, spends its time on. And if you follow all of the little tips that we're going to give you um, all together and combined you can start increasing your system throughput by uh, 30, 40, even 50 percent in some cases. Um,